can see the way they hate And I know better than to listen to the people who are calling us names Well, good morning, everyone. My name's Brian, and today is Tuesday, May 28th, 2024, and this is episode 707 of the Lots Project podcast, and it's titled Weighing the Options. I'll be chatting about thinking through some options of what we had to do up at the property, uh, some stories from the net that caught my eye and a little bit more, but first, let's check out in the live chat, see who's hanging out in the coffee crew, see, grab a cup of coffee, hang out for about an hour good morning good morning how is everyone doing today pip in pip in early but not so early so if if she weighs the same as a duck she's made of wood i don't know who she is but um yeah i would say uh jim s says uh, good morning everyone else rewild their life good morning to you um Jim says, can't hang around for this one off to Tampa, but he'll be listening. All right. All right. I got your order submitted, Jim. Thanks again for the comfrey order. Appreciate it. Uh, Backwoods Butcher, good morning. Lots family. Yes, it is a family here in the mornings. It's uh, it's like a big old family for sure. Good morning. Pip, uh, pick Pip back. Uh, it says, not a Monty Python fan. Um, fan. Um, hmm been a long time um i was was more into that was more a, a high school uh, a high school thing that never really carried on um uh, had like the high school uh, into college years and then uh, there was like a dark period there that kind of reset everything in my brain uh for some reason uh good morning cormac how we doing thanks for stopping Pickle Pete, how we doing in from the West Coast already? Early day on the West Coast for sure when we start at 4 a.m. But Pickle Pete says he's been enjoying getting up, watching the show every day and getting his day started because then he's got his show right after this. So what's in the cup today? I got a, a fantastic light Ethiopian. Uh, I can't pronounce the... the um, well, I probably could if I looked at it, but the word, the word, the the bean, the region, I believe, would be uh, would be that big Y word, right, Brian? Um, that's on the that's on the label. Yeah, I don't even. I'm sure I could go get it and and sound it out, and you guys would laugh and have fun and and make fun of me, but. It is what it is. It's a light Ethiopian. It is light, airy, and uh, and bright. It'll wake you up. It'll pop your eyes open. It'll stimulate your taste buds, and you're going to enjoy it for sure. Brian is master over there at Food Forest Farms at hand roasting micro batch air roasted coffee. It is fantastic. Uh, beyond that, the customer service, the pricing, the free shipping, everything, everything about Food Forest Farms is just fantastic. And you should go check it out. You should go to foodforestfarms.com. Use lots, lots five, L O T S five for 5% off anything you order anytime. And like I said, free shipping. So that's pretty good. Even though the price is bargain, it is below. I don't know. I don't know how he charges that price. Uh, but man, for what you get, it the value, the value. Um, Pickle P says, Yurga Chef E. Yurga Chef E. And he says, Some people leave off the, the E. So, Yurga Chef. How's that? Did I do all right? Um, if you want and you're a new, a new, um, new visitor to Food Forest Farms and you haven't ordered coffee with my discount code LOTS10, that's a one time code. You can get 10% off plus that free shipping, plus that low price, plus the fantastic customer service. Give it a try. Give it a try. You will not You will not be sorry you tried coffee from Food Forest Farms, and you will be drinking it for the rest of your life if you know good coffee. So I appreciate Brian. I appreciate Food Forest Farms. Here's to you. And my light Ethiopian, your Gashefi. <laughs> oh man 
All right. All right. What do we got going on today? So yesterday was a um yesterday was a trip out to the property. Uh Corey was off for Memorial Day. I hope everyone had a had a nice Memorial Day. You uh you partook in what you partake in on the day. If it's a day of remembrance for someone you've lost, if it's a day to have a day off at work or go to the beach, it is your prerogative to do with your time what you want. So, so they, uh, Corey was off. We decided we wanted to go out and work on the property together since that is something that, uh, that is limited for sure with her, with her working full time and me going out during the week, we get a few days on the weekend and we get limited hours on the weekend at that so far. Um, there's plans in the works to be able to go out and spend the whole weekend there, um, out at the cabin. We have to make some arrangements for the dogs, and so they they stay comfortable, and we're we have that in the works. So hopefully soon we'll be uh, we'll be out there for uh, chunks of time on the weekend, getting a lot of progress done. But for right now, we make do with what we can. Um, we would like to take advantage, um, get out there. We got out, we did the show, we did the dogs. We you know it still was one of Corey's vacation days, so we don't want to. Um, to push too hard um it's going to be a long journey it's going to be uh it's going to be a long process and uh no use burning out right at the beginning so we had uh, a list of stuff we wanted to do we wanted to get up there we wanted to move sod we wanted to get the bricks up to the top of the hill uh that was kind of the plan going in was Corey was going to work on uh removing the sod from the the shed site and i was going to carry the bricks up the hill well we got up there uh, I carried one brick up uh, with all my other stuff with my backpack. Corey had her backpack. We got up to the to the site. She checked out what I had gotten done uh, since she had been there last, and we started talking. Um, we realized the first thing we needed to do was get uh, the the site square. Um, what we had thrown out was just a rough guess on the the base of our uh, our shed that we were putting up. And so we wanted to get it aligned. We wanted to, with all the stuff I had cleared out, I had cleared out a bunch of uh, blowdown and stuff. And so it would, looked a little different. I, I had knocked down a bunch of weeds. We could kind of move it around. We could see a little bit better. And so we had decided to adjust it a little bit. Um, just the canter, we moved it, um, shifted it a little bit. And then we really wanted to make it square. Uh, so we went through the motions of squaring up and uh, and figuring out a 13 by 13 patch to take the sod out. Uh, and then we were standing there getting ready to getting ready to work. And we thought about the fact that there were a couple trees we needed to drop uh, before we could build the shed. Um, kind of working on the trees, looking at them, uh, taking them down before they're going to be an issue with a structure we're going to be putting up. So the shed where we're going to be putting the shed, there were two trees that um, not necessarily would fall on the shed if we cut them down, um, but close enough that why not drop them before, before it's there, uh, just in case. No oopsies. Uh, you never know. You're dropping trees there. These trees that I'm uh, dropped uh, yesterday, I was guessing the one was probably 30 to 40, 30 to 40 feet tall. And then the other one was definitely uh, way taller than that, probably more in the 60 to 80 range. Um, so they're long, skinny, they're lollipopped um, trees. That's just the way they were growing there. Uh, the, the species of trees and how how thick they are. They're super tall and uh, and lollipop. So a lot of them are one. You can tell which way they're leaning. Like if you've dropped trees in the woods before, tall trees at that, um, and you look, you can get a you can get a feel for the way they're going to want to naturally fall. So when you're not having to plan around structures and you're not trying to not drop them on on something that's already there. You can kind of go with what nature wants and it will um it goes a lot smoother let's say i've i've tried to rig things to make things fall where they shouldn't uh or where they don't want to and especially something that big it just gets it gets hairy so a lot of the trees are uh are are, are 
fantastic and they're 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 leaning away from every place we want to build so a lot of those will go as we have time along along the process but there were two there that you know i didn't want to try to drop them with the shed and then we want to put the the soft-sided garage right next to the shed so why not get it out get these two out of the way and i said Corey, i had the saw up there um i had i had bucked up all the all the big deadfall the week the day before so i was like why not hey how about with you here and that's something that um we try to do is if i'm if i'm dropping um if i'm dropping trees that are are still intact not on the ground already i um i try to do it when she's there or if i grab jamie or somebody somebody's there Dropping, dropping 60 to 80 foot tall trees isn't like, you know, dropping the sapling in your back backyard. Things can go sideways really quick. And when you're by yourself and every minute counts, it's not ideal. So it has to be done. It has to be done. But with her there, I was like, hey, let's take a little bit of time. Let's drop these trees. Boom, boom. Um, they went really well. Uh, they dropped right where I right where I wanted to. Um, the first one, I had a little issue. Uh, for some reason I couldn't connect my, my cuts on cutting my wedge out and it wouldn't, uh, it wouldn't kick out. And so the tw- twisted a little bit, um, a little bit on the way down, but not horrible. It still ended up in the same spot where I wanted it. Um, the other one, I, uh, I was dropping it and I told Corey, if it lands right on that stake, I did it perfect. And I was about you know, a foot away. So I was happy, very happy very happy if i could if i can drop these within a foot of where i uh i intend to i'll do that all day i'll be i'll take that all day long so we dropped those trees they were out of the way um so we uh we were just gonna leave them we're gonna buck them up and and drop them down probably for some firewood i have to really actually identify what kind of trees these are um the way they're growing I know there's a couple different kinds that all look the same. They've, they've all grown super tall and only have foliage at the top. Then the canopy's way, way up. So I, uh, I gotta, I couldn't see necessarily see the leaves very well from the top of these. And I'm not a bark expert yet. Um, so I'll identify these. They had to come down regardless of what kind they are. So today I'll get uh, pictures of the leaves and bark and uh, identify them for sure and decide what I'm going to do with them. But we left them where they are. They were fine. They're not hurting anything currently. Um, and so we decided to get to work. And like I said, when I uh, when I started here, uh, the plan was for Corey to work on sod and for me to carry up the 40 or as many as I could get cinder blocks. <coughs> and um, so yesterday, I think it was yesterday, on the show, I mentioned, hey, good morning, Hanging Laundry. I, I just saw your message there. I appreciate you stopping. Um, Raja over on the vertical feed. Hey, I am uh, I'm from the United States. I'm staying in Tennessee right now. Come join us over on uh, over on the main feed over on the on the full thing. Grab uh, hit my hit my YouTube channel and it should be the other live um, that's listed there. I appreciate you. Uh, but I don't check the comments over there. Hey Hunter, you got weather happening at the house. That's uh, that's not good. That's not good. Um, so I mentioned on yesterday's show that there's going to be a new path that I'm going to cut in. That um, that going up that hill is going to be uh, significantly easier once I cut in a path that that starts not all the way up the hill to carry stuff in. And so I got to a point yesterday where I I started weighing um, energy, basically, (laughs) evaluating energy outputs. Um, I have limited time with Corey. I have limited time with her out there. I have limited time with two people out there. Um, The two people jobs are dropping trees. I couldn't continue to drop trees if I wanted her to work on sod because I'm not having her be anywhere near them. I want her to move back and kind of observe. Let me know if she sees anything wonky or just not be in danger at all. Um, 
and be able to help me if I'm in danger. Uh, so I didn't want to drop any more trees. She was, she was starting to uh, take the sod out. And I was like, you know, I started, I started thinking about how heavy the blocks were. I carried the one up, uh, with my stuff. Like I said, it wasn't horrible. It's not going to be the end of the world carrying them in. It's going to be a lot of work. I know that. Um, but I started walking out and I, uh, I looked around and I said, you know, I stood on the hill and I looked where the path would cut out. I looked at what I was going to have to, to clear to get through that way, which was significant. It wasn't like um, walking through tall grass. It was briars. It was saplings. It was deadfall. Um, so it was going to be a significant undertaking. And I walked back up the section that I would be cutting out, uh, removing, I should say, not walking anymore. Uh, I, I really got a feel for how much uphill it was, how long it was, and then the rest of the path in from the peak of the hill. And then I started thinking about the fact that I'll probably be taking, you know, 20 to 40 trips up this with bricks with cinder blocks, with more material later. And I started thinking about all the energy that I'll save by cutting out the shortcut. And it was a matter of time when it was going to get done. But it really solidified yesterday where I said, you know, I think the energy it's going to take me to cut this path in today to take the the couple hours to cut it in. It wasn't extremely long. It was just a lot of organic matter. It was a lot of trailblazing. And I, I said, you know, I'm pretty sure I'll make it up in the energy saved carrying the bricks up the hill and not having to go the long way around. And so I just made that, that call. Um, I have this week, I have two more full days, two more full days to finish what uh, we didn't, we weren't going to get done to get the, the foundation set, uh, hopefully, uh, or if not two days and then the, the morning of Saturday, uh, Corey and I can still work on it. And then uh, I still have her to help me to, to assemble the shed on, on Sunday. So I was like, all right, I can target. We obviously weren't getting the shed built yesterday. That was blatantly obvious. So I said, you know what? This is going to benefit the long term. It's going to benefit the short term. So I took the day and I, I trailblazed. Um, and when I say day, when Corey and I go out and we leave the dogs back at the cabin and it's going to be 85, 87 degrees um, and we can't leave the cabin up open completely and we really don't trust our air conditioner all that much as of now, we get a half day. We really, we really have to be on the road back here by like one o'clock. And with doing the show and everything, I think we got out there a little after eight. By the time I processed the show, we walked the dogs and all that stuff. So, you know, we have a, a limited amount of time together uh, until we get the dogs out there. And so I started hacking away and um, man, I, I got it done. Um, I got I got it connected. It didn't really necessarily go where I wanted, but it, it definitely, it definitely cut the the hill off the top of the, the path. It's going to save a ton of time and energy. So yeah, um, best laid plans, right? And then you look at it and go, you know, do I do this now? Do I wait? Um, I was wondering if I should just carry all the bricks, say screw it and carry them up the original path. And then after that, cut the path in a little bit at a time, the new one. Um, but I really thought that the savings for just this one project uh, plus going forward was worth it. Pickle Pete says, don't beat yourself up. Um, I don't No, No, that's fine. Uh, I was excited with the progress that we made yesterday in such a short period of time. Um, Corey, Corey was like, yeah, you know, we only had so much time. And I said, you know what we got? We got um, we got two enormous trees cut down. We got um, I think she got half at least of the the sod out. Uh, it really gave us a a picture of what we're removing, what material we're working on, 
um, what will be there. Um, <laughs> hey, good morning, Mike Homestead over on the vertical feed. Uh, it, it, it gave me uh, a picture of what kind of roots I'll be cutting out. Um, and that's going to be a little bit today. So I'm going to be going out uh, after the show today, spending the day out there, uh, carrying bricks and prepping that that site again. And that's what I'm going to be doing for two days. Be carrying bricks and prepping that site. I'm going to use the sawzall and a and a and a, a wood blade, a, a pruning blade, to to rip out these uh, roots and the ones I can't get the sawzall into. I got uh, the root slayer, the root slayer um, shovel uh, that I have. That's got the uh, yeah, it's a it's a pretty sweet shovel. I, I I did a review on it, a review video on it a little way, a while ago. Um, Pickle Pete says, how deep is the sod layer until you hit honest earth? Um, there is a very thin layer of um, quote unquote sod. It's not sod. Um, Corey, what would you think? Like three or four inches at most? The grass that like what you were peeling off that spot. Yeah, it was probably three or four inches at most. Then there's a, a little layer of topsoil, and then there's clay-ish, clay-ish. Um, but, man, the the shovel goes uh, a whole shovel, large uh, large razorback shovel. Um, you step it in, and there's a lot of places it just drops completely in the whole spade depth. But usually, uh, I think she was taking like a half a shovel spade. And that was more than more than removing it, and then all the roots underneath. So, not not that far, not that far. It's not. Uh, it is definitely thick, lush forest uh, decomposed soil on the top, like inches of it. So, we'll see. We'll see. It'll be interesting when we try to dig um, try to dig post holes for the cabin. uh pickle piece is so long grass not it's very little grass actually <laughs> I, I don't even know um but long grass not prairie grass not too bad it's not deep it's not deep prairie grass no not by any means no not like minnesota you don't have to take a full shovel with and then um and then pry it out and bust the roots off no not even close <laughs> so it'll be interesting to prep the site uh, looks like we have the rest of the week, knock on wood, without a, a ton of rain, uh, if any rain at all. So hopefully I can get that worked on, get it leveled, get that carpet over it, um, that outdoor carpet, and uh, and keep the, the water off it until we can get the shed over it. So that's the one thing, um, that's the one thing that might screw us this next, this coming weekend. We're supposed to have... Um, we're supposed to have uh, thunderstorms next weekend, but we're supposed to have thunderstorms like every day, every day. There was it was amazing to me that there was like five days with no rain chance. Pickle P says, save all that great shit when you clear the cabin site. It'd be perfect for the start of a combo pile for the top of some of the Googles. Dude, there's um I have I have so much organics piled up. I have so much deadfall piled up. I have brand new um, I have brand new drop trees. I have blowdowns that are literally everything from solid, like petrified, uh, dried, super dried, like hung up in the air, what didn't have any ground contact and uh, man, like brittle dry um, all the way through relatively new down to stuff that when you pick it up, even though it's a, you know, a, a 12 to, to 16 inch diameter trunk. When you pick it up, it literally crumbles in your hand. The amount of growing material, the amount of biological life and abundance and fertility on this property are unbelievable. Um, you pull back some of the the, the blowdown and the deadfall and move it and Hey, back. How about that? Wonder what's going on with the interwebs. Um, I wonder if uh, if it got moved. Like, uh, you know, the weird thing is the 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 property owner mowed the lawn the other day, and then um, then it got changed. 
<laughs> the satellite might have moved a little bit. So I don't know. I don't know if we're. Um, I don't think that the trees are coming in any more than they did the, the last time that I moved it. So interesting. We'll be taking the Starlink out with us when we go for the weekends just for communication issues. And I'll have to make sure I mark where it goes in the yard so I, uh, so I get it back in the same spot every time we come back on Sunday night. But yeah, um, so that's the plan. That's the plan for the rest of the week. Um, it was it was that decision, and I thought about it a lot while I was whacking away through the through the brush. And, oh, and by the way, um, my machete my machete is officially dead. I uh, I can't safely use it anymore. Um, the handles crack through and it's it's awfully wobbly and if it's more than anything more than uh than maybe uh uh, uh blackberry briar it doesn't get through it it just it doesn't have the oomph because it's it's it has no nuts because every time the blade hits it just bounces a little bit so my machete is dead uh friday when i go to town i'm gonna pick up another one and uh yeah i don't think the cheap plastic handle will get removed or replaced so it's going to go in the pile to uh, to see what we can do with. Uh, it's a nice blade. Actually, it's not. I was looking at it yesterday after the handle was broken, and it's got a huge nick out of it. I don't know. Um, that blade is 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 uh, is crispy, Brian. He says paracord that handle. Um, it's a possibility. I did think about. Um, I did think about shoring it up with. Um, shoring it up with duct tape or 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 paracord or something. But, um, it, uh, yeah, it, it's, I have a dent in the, I have a dent in the blade. I don't know where it came from or what I hit. I have a nick out of the blade where I would probably hit like the edge of something metal. Some that was in the, in the, in the, um, brush that I was clearing or hit something that it's the same kind of nick you get in your, uh, lawnmower blades where it's like a chip out of the actual blade. But I also have like a dent that I don't know what happened. I don't know if it bounced, uh, if I was like chopping a tree down and it bounced and hit a stump. But uh, if the blade goes like this, there's like a, uh, a, bow, a dent in the blade. The blade still goes, the blade is still continual along the edge, the edge, I should say. Um, but it, um, yeah, it, it, yeah, I don't know. So, um, Pickle Pete says, I got a quality machete from Costa Rica. I got it off a of farmer. Ha they're shorter and a heavier, thicker blade. Hold a great edge. Length only hurts your wrist short and thick thick is good for a machete this one isn't too long i would say that's the length of my forearm <coughs> k-bong says epoxy is your friend having a backup is good <laughs> i have two so i have that uh, hey brian remember the remember the um the machetes you handed out at squatch fest i have that thing in the back of the truck still um that was my backup now I'll have two backups. And on this property, it's not bad. So like K-Bonk and, and Brian are saying, I'll probably take the thing. I'll epoxy the handle. I'll put a nice paracord handle on it. Something to that effect. Um, something to that effect and have them on the property. Fix up the blade a little bit. Use use the one with the, the slightly damaged blade for, uh, for stuff that uh, might damage blades and uh, the rest. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, so that'll be Thursday, Friday when I go to town. I'll, I'll grab another one at Tractor Supply. They're relatively inexpensive enough that um, for what I got, what I got cut down, I think I've had it for now just over a year, just over a year probably. Um, so what the what that is has knocked down, and I think it was like nine dollars. So, um, <laughs> Pickle Pete says it needs at least a ceremonial cut on blackberry. Yeah, everything, everything is, uh, there's plenty of blackberries to cut down there. 
and I'm waiting for them to pop. They're starting to turn red. Uh, I'm waiting for them to all ripen up. And every day I go out there, I'll be bringing home like a, a container of blackberries or at least stuffing myself full of them while I'm there because they are they are overflowing everywhere. So. Um, so that's kind of the update. The 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 valuation of what makes sense to do. Um, this I don't want to call it a struggle. The the um, the comparison in my head. Do I do I carry these bricks? Do I do I uh, cut the path? And what is the most beneficial? That came from a lot of over the years, uh, long projects, uh, whether it be at work or on our farm, uh, what makes the most sense and the most in, in what order, uh, as you get, as you get better at that, uh, you really save yourself some, some time and energy. And I just, yeah, it's, it's just, you look at the whole picture instead of looking at the individual tasks, you look at the whole picture and then, and the whole picture for me yesterday wasn't just the shed project. It wasn't just carrying the bricks up. Would it save me enough energy uh, to make it worth it carrying the bricks? It was the shed project. It was the the soft garage project. It was the cabin project. It was um, day-to-day living once we're there. Um, yeah, I think the, the couple hours to cut in the shorter path was well worth it. So I don't know. I don't know. Keep looking at stuff holistically and uh, and you find the right way. It's almost like when you're trying to cut paths on the on the property and and you just let them let it show you where to go. Um, sometimes it takes you to the right end place and you got to find your own short way to get there. But I did struggle. I, I'll tell you the deer, the deer aren't dumb on this property. Um, when I cut off, so most of the paths that, that we've cut in have started from deer trails, um, someplace where we can go exploring, where it's not horrible to walk through. And then we just widen it out from there and deer are smart. They go where it's easy. They go where it's, uh, it's smooth to walk through. When I started cutting in this new path, I was going along and I had a point where I wanted to get to. And where I wanted to come out. And as I started going down that path, um, I found out there was a huge dip and a, a huge uh, like slope off to the one side. I would have had gone down through that and back up. And it just didn't make sense for my goal was to um, to shorten and make the, the walk easier. So I turned a little, I went to the other side of this tree and I was going along and I, I'm getting closer. And then there was like, probably two hours worth of deadfall. I was going to have to grab the chainsaw and cut out to be able to walk through here um, that way. And I was like, oh man. So I climbed through all that. I got to the end where I wanted to pop out and I went exploring and it didn't end up where I wanted it at all. Um, but path of the least resistance to the point I had gotten to the point where I needed to be uh, path of least resistance, cut it in and and went to town. And yeah, it so it doesn't quite work out where you want, uh, but it accomplished the goal. Um, what else do I have here? Okay, I had a couple of these stories sitting in my web browser and they were from, I think, last Thursday, uh, last Thursday show, last, last week's show kind of went bonkers with uh, everything that happened Monday, Tuesday um kind of was not completely thinking straight the whole time but um i had these couple of news stories that i want to talk about and one's been going on quite a while it's not new uh but there was an update to it um uh, the story is back is from minnesota i uh, i still subscribe to some of the the news feeds um on facebook i didn't i didn't delete them uh that i followed when i was in minnesota to kind of keep an eye on what was going on locally uh and regionally and uh i've been seeing this story over the last oh man it's been a while now but there was a state trooper there good morning john palmer thanks for for stopping in and there was a state trooper up in minnesota that um that shot a guy i guess um I, I have to assume he died. The cop is the cop is um, been charged <coughs> with excessive force, or he's been charged um, by the Hennepin County 
attorney. Hennepin County is where Minneapolis is. It's uh, it's it's a big, huge county uh, right with uh, with Minneapolis and the and the surrounding suburbs. There's a ton of people there. It's it's a pretty pretty congested county. It's the county seat or the state cap or the state capital isn't there, but the Hennepin County Hennepin County uh, office buildings right in smack middle of of uh, Minneapolis. So big. Big, lots of people and all sorts of stuff. Obviously, there's a, a lot of police presence and the state troopers are are kind of monitored there quite a bit. Uh, there's major interstates that run through uh, Hennepin County. And so whatever, uh, I, I believe going back, and this story isn't necessarily about what went down uh, when he shot the guy. Uh, that's long past. I think it was a traffic stop for some reason. Uh, I recall hearing about it when it happened, but this is more about what's going on with the Hennepin County District Attorney. So, guy gets shot. Obviously, um, I, I I don't I don't have any comment on the on the police shooting, <laughs> like. <laughs> Me, me and cops aren't uh, aren't the bestest of, of uh, we're not really on the same page. So, uh, but on the other hand, you do stupid things around stupid people that can kill you, and um, sometimes shit happens. So, I think it's all a bunch of bullshit either way. Um, whether it's ch it's a chicken or it's a chicken or the egg thing, it's chicken. Should the cop have the opportunity to shoot the guy, or should the guy be in the opportunity in the in the in the spot to be shot? So, whatever. Um, the thing that's got me watching with interest is the Hennepin County attorney is so anti-cop. Okay. So when the whole George Floyd thing went down, if you remember George Floyd, um, they just named a day in honor of him in Minnesota. Uh, he was the guy that started the race riots in 2020 in Minneapolis. I can't breathe. Uh, he's the dude that the the cop kneeled on his neck and and choked him out and the fentanyl probably killed him or all the heart problems from the meth and the coke and again uh, a question of you know d d I don't take either side because the cop was wrong and the the criminal was also wrong uh, so flip a coin whose fault was it not enough. Not enough to spark riots in a city before they even knew what was going on, before they got the talk screen back or anything like that. But I got to live through that because I worked in that county. So this was the county that they were going to defund the police. This is the city where it's just burning into oblivion. Um, the criminals have taken over Minneapolis. There's movies been made about it recently and this and that. The district attorney is, is anti-cop. She is uh, she is definitely far left anti cop. Um, so she's she had her she this is her goose. This is her golden goose. You know, the guy that was um, the guy that was I believe Keith Ellison was a uh, um, Hennepin County attorney eh, mm, might have been state. I think it went statewide once the riot started. But anyway. Anyway, this district attorney in Hennepin County is is pretty anti-cop. So she charges this guy with um, first degree homicide. Eh, I don't think it says in the article what he got charged with. Uh, but anyway, they are uh, they haven't put him on trial yet. They were doing discovery. They were looking through all the evidence, and it turned out that the Hennepin County attorneys expert use of force expert you know so they have experts that examine the case they examine the information and they say yes i will come to trial and i will say what i think and this is what i think and so they asked an impartial use of force expert to evaluate the the facts of the case and he came back and said you know in my opinion, the cop didn't do anything wrong. He 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 went through the proper motions. He he gave them opportunity to to surrender, um, and then he was protecting his 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 uh, his best interests. Um, and that's when he used force, excessive force. But well, 
uh, the right amount of force to save him, I guess, is what uh, is what the use of force expert was saying. Well, like a petulant child, the the D- Hennepin County District Attorney told the the person that she chose. This is her expert, not the not the defense's expert, not the cops expert. This is her expert. The prosecutor's expert told her that, yeah, you got you ain't got anything that holds water. She dismissed him and said, I don't like your answer. We're not going to use you. This made headlines. Made headlines. Why shouldn't it? When when her when her expert says that he didn't do anything wrong. But, you know, just like anybody, you want a second opinion. And so this article today uh, or last week was talking about the fact that she hired a second and as soon as she dismissed the expert, there were there were calls for her resignation. There were calls for her to be removed. There were calls like, wait, what? This is a witch hunt, blah, blah, blah. Well, she hires a second, uh, a second use of force expert. And <laughs> guess what that one said? Yeah. Cop didn't do anything wrong. Cop was within his within his uh, with his within his rights or whatever they whatever magical power they give cops that they're allowed to shoot people. Um, he was okay. I can't I can't I can't go to trial and say that that uh, we should we should put the guy in jail. And she didn't like it, and so she dismissed that one too. She kicked that one out. So now she's two for two. She's two for two. She's she's hired two experts, state side experts. I mean, uh, experts that are obviously um, they're supposed to be impartial. But I'm guessing when you when you hire an expert for your side, you do a little vetting and you look into them, and they're going to be the people most likely to support your position. Uh, she's gone over two. Now they're calling for her to resign. They're calling for the governor to remove her. They're calling for the governor to at, at a minimum. Um, put a different district attorney in for this cop and to drop the, uh, or for this trial and to have them dismiss the trial. And I think it's an absolute shit show. Um, how, how does the public look at their, uh, their leaders? They're churning out these leaders that have such an agenda. So this des- this district attorney, Hanging Laundry says, by the way, what law schools are rubber stamping and churning out these days are downright scary. Well, there is that. Um, I think to Idiocracy and Dr. Lexus. Are we on our way there? Uh, Frito, one of the main characters, Dax Shepard, Frito is a lawyer. He went to he went to law school at Costco. Um, are we there? Are we almost there? Um, when we have a district attorney for a county that are that basically is supposed to up be the the top lawyer, the top prosecutor in the county, which I described Hennepin County is a, is a pretty big one in Minnesota. It's not like it's not like rural northern Minnesota where there's you know five thousand people in the county. Um, when they have that much of an agenda, that beyond any reason, beyond any explanation, beyond any expert or two telling her that there was nothing there, she still presses on to to string up this cop. I mean, it sounds like Salem witch trials, and I am not an apologist for the cops. Not at all. But I think at some point, (laughs) at some point, you got to go, I don't think we're going to get this one and and walk away. But she's insistent. She's insistent. I'm going to keep an eye on it. I I mean, it doesn't really affect me much anymore uh, other than uh, I have family there. I have family and friends there. And I think if... um, Either way this goes, it's so it's so emotionally charged now um, that it's going to spark another incident, no matter what way it goes.
if they if it's public at all. So Pickle P says uh, WEF's goal and actual billions are being used to place these idiots on purpose. Yeah. Um, Pickle P says, and imagine the same apparatus coming after anyone. Justice is dead. Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, Pip says, is this like the judge in the Trump case uh, scolding the witnesses for telling the truth? Possibly. Um, I can't tell you. I checked out of the Trump cases like uh, when he was president. Because they were they were like taking him to trial when he was president, wasn't it? Isn't it? Um, hasn't it been like seven years the guy's been on trial or something? <laughs> so there's that. k says Trump and Tim Pool interview was good. Okay. I, I don't, I don't have any time for this shit. Um, I don't have any time for, for political candidates. When we, when we hold up sleepy Joe and the orange man and say, these are the two most qualified people in the country to run the country. Like we're not even trying to fake it anymore. They're not even, they're not even trying to, to put a, uh, a puppet in there. I mean, they are putting a puppet in there. But they're not even they're not even trying to make the puppet real. We're like literally to the point where we used to have Muppets uh, where they had the strings and the and the invisible strings underneath. And you, you looked at the Muppets and you were like, oh, yeah, they they could be real. They're a little out there. I don't know if this like legitimately could be real, but but at least they're realistic. We're to the point where it's fucking marionettes with uh, with with cables coming down that are fluorescent yellow and it's like are they uh are they puppets or are they real people i don't know they're real uh, like what like how how do they put these people out and say that they are the most qualified two people in our country how many people live in this country and these two muck these two are the most qualified Pickle P says he's on trial for an accounting issue, which box the expense went into. It's is the only issue. And who wrote the number down? Literally. Um, perfect. The fact, the fact that you took enough of your life force to figure that out. So I'm saying, I don't know. I'm trying to get out of that shit. <laughs> um <laughs> uh sorry guys I, I, <laughs> I, I don't know i i you know what I, you know what you know what matters to me you know you know what benefits me the most what my energy um it's benefiting me the most taking that energy and spending the time and the effort making videos building a cabin in the woods working on a fucking awesome permaculture project on this on this unbelievable uh undeveloped land learning learning different techniques learning different um learning different uh, ideas, exploring different technologies and, and utilizing them the best way I can. And since I've checked out of politics, since I've checked out of the news, since I checked out, out on giving a fuck about anything other than what's going to hit me in the face um, when I cut down that tree or uh, if my machete blade's going to fall off or, you know, I do keep an eye on things to, 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 to have an idea what's coming, but very limited, very, very, very limited. Um, Pickle P says, hell yeah, stay out of it if you can, but the chaos will make Bitcoin moon. Does Bitcoin, does the price of Bitcoin change my thoughts on Bitcoin? 
does the does the price of Bitcoin um, change what I what I attempt to do? No. Um, mm, mm, yeah, a little bit, a mm, mm, little bit. Um, I'm going to stack. We're at, we're such we're so at the bottom of the or at the top, I guess, of the iceberg, the bottom. It's weird because it's going to go like this, but we're talking top down on the on the on the iceberg. I'm going to keep buying um, short plays. So, like, here's the deal. Buy the dip. Incrementally, yeah, over time, it's going to add up. But the three thousand dollar difference on your on your purchase because you bought the dip, when when the difference in price is going to to jump more than that in a, in an hour, it's not going to matter. When when a when a five thousand dollar swing doesn't even put out alerts because it's only like one percent. What's it what's it gonna matter? Keep buying, keep stacking, keep teaching people about Bitcoin, keep understanding it more, keep being able to come up with better ways to talk to people and 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 help them understand it to to give them an advantage moving forward. That's that's my Bitcoin strategy. It is what it is. I watch the price. I'm not going to lie, but you know what? It doesn't change. It doesn't change the philosophy. If it crashed to 40 tomorrow, I still, I still don't have a, a pile of reserves waiting to buy. I wish I did. I wish I was in that position, but if I was in that position, I would probably, I would probably be buying at 70 and buying at 40 and buying at 60. And, you know, um, I buy what I can when I can and just keep going. Piggle P says, keep planting plants, growing more animals. Yes, never get distracted by the big show. It's just a show. Well, and that's the thing. That's the thing. As I secure local sources for my protein, as I as I adjust my diet to what I can source from people I know or locally, uh, people that um, that have their shit together and aren't going to get affected by uh, the show, I become less and less dependent on 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 having to pay attention. If I can get energy independence, if I, can, if I can do all these things, the more I can check off the list that I can take care of by myself or I can source community uh, in person with someone that I know that I can get to them, whether I have fuel for my truck. If I have if I don't, I can ride a bicycle, local economy, local people, the more I can source that in anywhere I want to be, the less I got to pay attention to the shit show. Because it, 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 like, what, what difference does it make? If Sleepy Joe gets elected, if, if uh, Mr. Rogers gets elected, if, if Orange Man gets elected or, or whoever, it doesn't matter because what are they going to do? They don't give a shit about me. I'm I'm the one they want to ignore. And they want you to ignore too. Cuz I'm telling you to ignore them. <coughs> Insulate yourself from it. You don't have to pay attention to it. It's been the goal for me for a long time. Um the more you can insulate yourself from all the distractions, the more you can insulate yourself from all the bullshit. The more you can insulate yourself from not having to fucking worry when COVID happens and they start shutting down the stores, or you don't want to get a vaccine to go into a store. You don't want to wear a mask to go to a store. Don't have to go to the store. Use the store if you want, but if it comes down to it, be able to not have to go. Because it was really easy to, to walk into the store and when they said, hey, you got to put a mask on, you turn around, walk out and you go home and you go to the deep freezer and you pull out the rabbit that you raised or the chicken or the quail or the beef you sourced or the pork you sourced from down the road. Oh, toilet paper, you were prepared because you had some.
I don't know. You can pay attention if you want, but when you don't have to, you can use the you can use what they have, but when you don't have to, if they ask you to do something you don't want, you tell them to go fuck themselves because I don't need you. Play by their rules until you don't. Play by their rules until you don't want to or don't have to. That's I think that's the goal. I don't know. Anyway, one other story here real quick. Um, and actually, I I, uh, I was scrolling through, uh, clearing some notifications this morning and on LinkedIn, an article popped up that was, uh, was kind of in line with it. Um, so I went to school at the University of Buffalo. So the, Buffalo, New York had several colleges. Um, they actually had more than one state college. So they had the University at Buffalo, and then they also had Buff State. Uh, Buffalo State University. They were both state schools. One was a college, one was university. Um, this is about Buff State, the smaller, uh, the smaller state college. Um, re- pretty much, if I recall, even back in the even back in the '90s when I was there. Uh, hey, Chris Dixon. Good morning. Um, uh... Hold on one sec. Um, Chris Dixon says, it's interesting how people think off-grid requires a chop from a machete when really it's incremental steps to stop purchasing from feeding the system you're trying to avoid. Yeah, you kind of like withdraw from it. um, Slowly. You start checking off the you start checking off the things they could hold against you. I think I think that's that's really what freedom in this country is at this point. We we say that freedom's dead in this country. I think freedom is checking off as many boxes to keep thing checking as many boxes of the list of things they can hold against you. You need food. You need to comply. You need this. You need to comply. You need this. You need to comply. If you you don't need those things, guess what? Anyway, uh, back when I was up uh, up in that area, uh, Buff State was a teaching college. That's 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 the kind of it was a teaching college and it was a a, a party college, I guess. Um, I saw this article last week. And, you know, the, the universities are, they're going away. Um, they're, you, the colleges are going, to, they're going downhill. Uh, I saw this article. So it was from May 23rd, uh, Buff State to, to cut 37 programs. Uh, in the article, it says uh, Buff State will be con- cutting more than 30 programs. It is said in an effort to capitalize on the university's academic strengths, manage costs, and meet uh, evolving student needs. Um, it goes on to talk about how they're, they're, uh, they're a teaching college and that's what they're going to focus on, which made me, made me question this list, uh, down here is the list. I'm going to, I'm going to hit a, a couple of these and, and let you see what programs they've decided to cut. Um, pickle pieces, teachers and dental assistants, ah, made bar night so much more fun. Not saying we never went down to the buff state bars to, uh, to, to, to pick up the potential teachers. Um, yes. And the dental, the dental assistants. So, uh, these, these are the, the programs that, uh, a predominantly teaching school that, uh, that promotes that are, are cutting, uh, Afro-American studies, bachelor biology, education certificate, biology, education certificate, both the 32 and the 36 hour certificates. We're going to drop chemistry masters. We're going to drop chemistry education masters. We're going to drop chemistry education certificates, both the 42 and the 36 hours. We're going to drop the dance minor, uh, early childhood education masters, early childhood education bachelors, foreign language education masters, French and French and uh, French culture minor, French education bachelors, Italian minor. Um, we're going to drop the physics master's program, the phys- physics education certificate, both the 42 and the 36. Um, Spanish education bachelors, uh, special studies bachelors. I'm not sure what that is. Urban education masters and urban studies bachelors. Um, 
and then reviewing to be possibly removed by 2025. Um, let's see, math, magical logic, non-Spanish and Chinese concentrations, uh, printmaking, religious studies. So all of these are the things that they're dropping, science, chemistry, and physics, um, all, these, all these education, masters and bachelors. So the teaching college, is getting rid of the teaching programs and mainly in the sciences. Weird, weird. Hunter says it sounds like they're dropping everything that would be useful for teaching someone, somebody else. Yes, for sure. Um, so here you go. Today, this morning, as I as I put that back on the list because I skipped it and I wanted to get it off my browser here um, from last week, I pulled up LinkedIn and I see this headline: "College pays off at 50k a year." With the value of a degree called into question and skilled trades on the rise, the Wall Street Journal reports that college can be worth it if you attend an in-state public university or college like Buff State, and work a job that pays at least $50,000 a year, it's worth it. $50,000 a year. It makes it worth it to go to a, a four-year in-state university. $50,000 a year on the standard work year not saying you know most jobs that are 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 uh, are, are your non college jobs you can pick up some overtime factory jobs trade school you know maintenance entry level stuff you can pick up overtime straight 2080 uh straight 2080 hours a year standard work year hours that's $24 an hour So they are saying, well, Chris Dixon says, but wait, we have student loan forgiveness. We're not talking about going to a private university. We're not talking about going to someone. We're talking only the bottom of the barrel in-state universities. And they're saying in the later in the article, I don't have time to get into the whole thing here at the end of the show, but <coughs> the rest of the article goes on to say that, you know, community colleges are probably not worth it because you go to community college, you can't get a job to pay for the community college. It's not worth it. So $24 an hour, I've talked at length uh, before about my job selection, my job history. I get bored. I move on. I've I take a lot of pay cuts to learn new skills. $24 is an hour is not hard to get entry level walking in the door. No college, no nothing, no certificate, no fucking community college no trade school no 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 walk out of high school have a half a brain in your head and you should be able to make 24 dollars an hour maybe not the day you walk in but by the time four years comes around and you spent all the money to go to a college you should be at least at 24 dollars, if not more if you have any sort of work ethic Pickle P says, I could make 60K as a swamper if I wanted to work full time. I don't think you had to grad, grad kindergarten to get this job. Right. John Palmer says, how do people get by on 50K a year these days? Well, that's the thing. I was trying to do the math in my head. You have to put in the student loan payback because that's what they were talking about in this. They're talking about the fact that all these kids are going to these schools and getting these 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 degrees and getting taking these loans, and then they can't get a job that they make enough money to even pay for the loan, let alone the fucking living expenses. Pickle P says it's easy to live on 50K without rent and don't buy new shit. Priorities. Chris Dixon says, but you got to pass a piss test. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Pickle. So Pickle B says it was a taste test, as in they were tasting your piss. 
or it was a mouth. Um, uh, have we finally evolved to the point where we can give drug tests and see if people are actually fucking under the influence and not the fact that they've they've partaken within the last 30 days? That was becoming a thing in Minnesota before we left. I and I don't pay attention anymore because I don't need to take drug tests for some reason to do a podcast. Um, Pip says 50k doesn't even get a place to live down there. Yeah, but they were uh, they were talking about uh, or they were starting to use mouth swabs um, that didn't didn't pop positive on residual fat and um, cannabinoids in the urine you had to have been partaking within uh, within a few hours or something i don't know i didn't look too much into it i haven't taken i i really unless i needed to get the job um i'll take one but i told i always told people that i i don't i don't do that I don't do it um, after after I get the job. But like if you if you need me to prove that I'm clean to get the job, I'll do it. But y- you have no you have no right to monitor my life outside of when you own me. So you can fire me. I'll just move on and take the next job. Um, Hanging laundry is wondering what a swamper is. It's the guy that walks along and um, and helps clear trails. They run in front of the equipment, um, clean deadfall, clean branches, buck trees, ground crew for uh, for trail clearing. Hey, right here, Pickle Beat says a swamper is basically the foot labor in forestry, clearing trails, moving down logs, etc. John Palmer says federal DOT like registrations. Yeah, but you know what? I, there's other jobs. I, I choose not to drive a truck drive. I dri- choose dr- not to drive a truck. Anyway, seven after. Let's uh let's go. John Palmer, it's a regulation for you by choice. I mean, I'm I'm not saying that it's an easy choice. I'm not saying it's an easy easy thing to get around. It's something that you do to make a living, and and that's that's your choice. It's not a regulation for you. It's a regulation of the job you chose to go into. <laughs> All right, let's wrap it up. I gotta get uh, I gotta get this show processed. I gotta get out and uh, and carry some bricks to figure out. Um, John Palmer says I like the six figure pay. Okay, then that's it's your choice, man. That's that's what I'm saying. I uh, I know I know uh, plenty of people that um, don't take piss tests and make six figures. Um, <laughs> all right we're gonna get out of here i gotta get out there get some work done get uh get that this rolling um i appreciate everybody listening we got that we got that uh, bogo sale over at comfreyroots.com just put in coupon code share the love you won't notice much in the cart except the fact that it adds the coupon share the love that just signals to me that um that signals to me that you're interested in the second package we'll send you a, a separately vacuum 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 packed package of comfrey roots for you to share with someone a friend a family a stranger someone at church someone at the store um man maybe check in with them make sure they're ready to plan it they got a place for it but it's for you to spread the love or if you want to put it in your garden you can too But share the love at comfreyroots.com at checkout. Put it in, and we will get those on the way to you as soon as our next gig happens. Um, You can also also find me at thelotsproject.com, where you can find all my product reviews, partner companies, discount codes, affiliate links, and a shitload of other information. We also sell some stuff. 
uh, in the shop there. I appreciate everybody listening. If you enjoyed the show, it's always free to hit the like, share, and subscribe. You can return value for value. Consider joining one of the YouTube membership tiers or listening on any value for value platform like Podverse or Fountain.fm. It's Tuesday, but it feels like Monday because everybody had Monday off. We're going to get it going. We got four days left. Get it done. Make sure you knock it out of the park today. Do everything you can because you're never guaranteed to wake up tomorrow, guys. Have an awesome day, and we will catch up to you on Wednesday.